What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another breaking news story and the WTA have finally released their calendar. We just got the ATP release their first two months worth of tournaments up until the Australian Open. Now the WTA have just done the same. So let's go through before we start the tournaments that have been cancelled slash postponed. So Brisbane International cancelled. Auckland Open cancelled. Shenzhen Open cancelled. Adelaide International has been moved to Melbourne exactly like the men's tournament. Uh, the Hobart International, that's been cancelled. Also, Thailand Open has been cancelled. And Acapulco has been cancelled. Still on for the men at this stage, but it's been cancelled for the women. And then two tournaments that have been postponed into the later parts of the year. We have the Doha Open, which is a big tournament. And also, St. Petersburg Open as well, which has been postponed. So, those tournaments are going to be played later in the year, maybe in March. We know there's a big spot in March because of Indian Wells being cancelled there. But uh, a lot of tournaments cancelled on the WTA. But here are the tournaments that are going to be played in the next couple of weeks or the first couple of weeks of the season. So the women are going to start off in Abu Dhabi, which is going to be a WTA 500. Remember, the WTA have started structuring their tournaments very similar to the ATP. WTA 500, Abu Dhabi. That's the first tournament of the season. Then they're going to have a couple of weeks off while the players can, you know, qualify for the tournament. Remember, qualifying in, in the Australian Open is going to be in Doha this year. Then the players are going to come over. They're going to quarantine. First tournament in Australia is going to be called Melbourne 1, which is a WTA 500 event, and also Melbourne 2, which is a WTA 500 event. Same as the men. The men have the exact same structure of tournament, uh, both called Melbourne 1 and Melbourne 2, but they're smaller tournaments, I think, for the men. Then the Australian Open, the first week of the Australian Open, of course, starting on the 8th of February. Then we've got in the second week of the Australian Open, another tournament in Melbourne for the WTA. It's going to be a WTA 250 event which is going to be played for all the players that didn't make it through that first week of the Oz Open. So all the first, second, and third round uh, losers of the tournament get a second chance to play another tournament in Melbourne. And then later on, on after the Australian Open, we have a WTA 1000 event at one of the biggest tournaments on the schedule for the women, and it's in Dubai. And last year... Uh, Simona Halep won the whole thing, so it's a big tournament. Big players play that. So we've got the Australian Open final on the 21st of February, and then on the 22nd of February in Dubai, we have a big WTA 1000 event. So there you have it, the WTA schedule for the first month and a half, maybe two months. Of course, we know that Indian Wells is not going to be played in March. It's going to be either played later in the year or not at all. And Miami's still up in the air. We don't know 100% if Miami's going to be played in the end of March. So we don't have confirmation from March onwards into the clay season, but we do have confirmation. January, February, WTA, ATP, they're locked in. A lot of tournaments happening in Melbourne. A lot of tournaments happening in the Middle East as well. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think it's too much? Do you think these tournaments are too many? You think WTA 500's all over the place? And then Australian Open going straight to Dubai. Do you think it's too much too soon? Are they trying to cram too much in? It's a little bit of a tough schedule for the women to start, but it doesn't matter. We're getting tennis starting in January.